Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the drive modules for drain damage and kind of how I designed them and how I came up with this design. So let's talk about it. So as I said in the first video, second video, one of the videos, the bot is kind of a blending of both crippling depression and low low man. So basically what I'm doing for the drive is I start out with the idea that I had from crippling depression, which is right over here. So if anyone has followed that build, we have these um, UHMW drive pods that kind of sit over here. So it's like this, it's kind of like this little L right here, right? So have one of each of those drive pods in there, but the thing I didn't like about those in Crippling Depression is you kind of have to take the whole frame apart. So you'd have to completely disassemble the entirety of the robot to get those out. So what I did is I kind of copied the design that I did in Lolo Man where everything's kind of modular. This is the whole guts and they would just kind of slide into place like that. So what I'm doing in drain damage is I'm kind of taking that concept. I'm taking the drive pod that I designed for crippling depression, making it a little bit smaller, but then kind of giving it that press in that I did for low, low man. So I end up with this module and this is eventually going to become this one single piece and that's going to be all the guts. So you're just going to kind of have like this shell and then the guts just kind of drop in as one solid piece. So let's take a closer look at this piece. So here is a closer look at the drive module. I'm calling it the drive module, but it's really the guts. This is eventually going to be the entire guts for the bot. And you can see if anyone's familiar with crippling depression, it kind of has that similar design. Interesting thing though is this is from the ground up. This is 100% um, new, um, new file as you would call it. Um, I start a new file. There's really nothing shared from Crippling Depression other than just kind of the design ideas. So basically what we have is we got two um, drive pods on either side and then we have, um, I think these are yeah, 35, 48, 900 kV motors. There's going to be wheels that sit in the middle of these. So these are actually the three inch compliant. On crippling depression, it's like the three and seven eighths, so about the four inch. So this is a uh, much smaller wheel than what was in crippling depression. And then we still have the um, Bane bots. It's the P60, what is it? P61, 61S, 16 to one gearboxes. And so yeah, pretty, pretty similar. The old crippling depression used, I think 42 something, 4235, something like that. Same power output. These are just kind of a little bit smaller and longer. So general same power output. So this should have about the same pushing power. I think those were a 750 kV, these are a 900, but the smaller wheel versus the bigger wheel, I think speed's gonna be about the same. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of slim this whole thing down this way. The old ones were a lot taller, a lot wider, and obviously they had the larger wheels. So yeah, just trying to kind of simplify it, make it a lot smaller. The old drive pods were also not um, linked together like that. As you can see, they're kind of um, connected together and they're kind of loosely connected together. They're actually only connected together um, with these little pieces right here. And this is all PLA. This is all just testing for now. But these are just kind of wire guards. They're just to kind of keep wires out of the actual motor. And if you bear with me for one second, I'll disconnect these and I'll show you a couple things. So now I have these disconnected and you can see that there is a rear support bearing at the end of these. So it's kind of a double purpose. I'm consolidating space a little bit, but I'm actually supporting the rear of the can. And I did just turn these down ever so slightly on the lathe so it would fit nicely into that bearing. So these are actually identicals of each other. And that's the other kind of cool thing about this design is there's no mirrored parts. Um, they're the exact same part, but I can just kind of mirror it like that and then they end up being the same. So it actually cuts down on the um, amount of components. Um, on crippling depression, everything was mirrored because what they were like that. And so everything had to be mirrored. And so there was double, there was a left of everything and the right of everything. But these are actually a lot more simplified um, because it is like that. So let's break down into one of these and I'll kind of show you what's inside. 
So I guess another thing I should say is that the original ones were machined out of UHMW, and I knew for these I wanted to 3D print them, because 3D printing just kind of gives you a lot more eh, flexibility and you can do a lot more with it. So I knew that they were going to be 3D prints, so there's a lot of design choices here that I'll try and explain because of 3D printing. So let's just get this guard off. And one of those choices is, you can see this um, block is kind of a separate piece, right? This is a completely separate piece from it. And in 3D printing, you want to try and minimize um, overhangs and minimize support material as much as possible. So a lot of these things are kind of uh, multiple pieces because of that. So this is a multiple piece that kind of goes on there. These are little separate pieces, things like that, um, that just decisions that I was making during the design process because I knew that this would end up being 3D printed. Keep in mind that all of these parts are still kind of in flux. I'm still designing this. I haven't finished any of the designs. So there's still gonna be some changes and I'll make note of those as I go along. One of the other things I'm trying to do with this design and this bot in particular is keep the fastener count as down as much as possible. I don't wanna buy a bunch of fasteners. I wanna you know, exclude fasteners where possible. And if I can share fasteners or at least share the same Allen size, that is awesome. So for this, there is only one screw that holds this whole assembly together. I mean, kind of generally. So we take out this one screw in the back and then this whole thing should come apart. And this is kind of important for me because in the previous iteration of these, I actually had four screws running one, two, three, four, and that would actually go through the whole frame and the whole chassis and hold the whole thing. And that was just an absolute nightmare. So this just has that one screw. And I thought about getting rid of it, but it does serve one important purpose. So this fits inside the shell like this. And when it's inside, nothing can go anywhere. You have these um, bosses here, here, and here, which end up being the mounting for the um, uh, lid for the shell. But when you take it out, this could kind of come off. So it's really just to kind of keep it there when you pull it out of the assembly. And when we open this up, you can see that this is very, very familiar to the um, first gen of crippling depression. We basically have a fully captive chain inside there. And what I mean captive is this channel, this one doesn't have a chain, the channel that the chain rides in, it's, it's pretty tight. It doesn't rub against there, but doesn't really have a lot of places to move. And I like that, that's the whole design of this, is things can't really go anywhere else. And when we put the wheel in there and put the cap on the end, everything is pretty well constrained inside of there. And I know there was originally an issue with people were saying like, oh, what if you get gunk inside there? I never really had an issue with that with crippling depression. I think there's just such little room inside here that that really didn't happen much. But yeah, just something to make note of. Um, yeah, we're using the Bainbots P61S gearbox coming straight out of there. Um, these are the custom gears that were from old Crippling Depression. These are all titanium. Um, I custom machined, I had these wire jet cut and then custom machined these. So all titanium gears, number 25 chain. And then I just have a um, keyway in here, a keyway in here, and then there'll be the keyway isn't shown. And this one becomes a live shaft, obviously driven by the chain. So pretty cool. And uh, once again, I'm not using any set screws in any of this because I hate set screws. Set screws suck, they always fail. Um, so I'm gonna be using the key. Come on, turn around. So I'm gonna be using the key on there, which corresponds to a key in the wheel that drives. Then there's gonna be a key in here, which corresponds to the key in the sprocket and that is how the drive transmission works. And I guess I should also mention that I have um, bearings pressed into all of this. So if I take out that chain, I guess we'll get a quick look at these um, custom sprockets. So these kind of started out life um, with Actobotics from Servo City, and I kind of made modifications. Now there's something completely different, um, but you see it's a triple stack up. We have water jet cut aluminum, water jet titanium, and then water jet and machined titanium in the middle. And I did the aluminum just to tap into because titanium is kind of a pain in the butt to tap into. So these are little gear stacks or sprocket stacks, um, just kind of customs. And these are the exact same thing that was in Crippling Depression. I just kind of took them out. 
And then on the inside, um, you can see that I've got the um, bearing inside of here. And then I just have the gearbox mounted directly in like that. And one thing you might not be able to tell, but there's a little bit of a radius um, here in the chain. Um, this top piece kind of comes down a little bit, I'm exaggerating, but it kind of pushes the chain down or pinches it like that and gives it a little bit of tension. And that chain rides in there really, really nice because of that. I do feel like I could talk about these um, drive modules forever, but I'm gonna just talk about like two more things. So I'm gonna take this off the back here just because I kind of wanted to show you how it all mounts up together. The reason the screws are kind of in this weird arrangement is because there's just not that much meat. I was kind of looking at this whole thing in SolidWorks in the um, like wire frame because this is relatively thin. We've got the bearing in there, and these were just kind of the only three spots for it. So I've got the brass heat set inserts in there, and then you've got this piece, and I think this is gonna stay 3D print. No, the, not a problem with that. That'll be 3D printed, um, totally fine there. And another thing that you might have noticed is you got all these holes. What are these holes for? Pressing out the bearings. Um, these holes are about the same size as a 632, so we can actually just kind of screw in there. And by doing that, we can actually eject the bearings out. So that is what those are for. They're just a 632 through hole and they correspond right into the bearing race. So you gotta think about these things when you are going to be doing press fit bearings, they're gonna get stuck. So you might wanna give yourself a way to get them out. And so yeah, all of these are just a through hole 632, kind of cool. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about for the existing gearboxes or drive modules is the motor adapter. It kind of comes with, I don't know, it's somewhere around here, um, stupid little motor adapter plate, and it really doesn't work well with the brushless motors, so I decided to make my own for a few different reasons. So let's get that off. I also don't have the appropriate uh, fasteners here. I need much longer fasteners because my uh, face plate is kind of thicker than what it's supposed to be. So take those off. And so yeah, that's what this looks like. Uh, we have the recess built into there. So it's basically the same as the stock. It's one, a little bit thicker to accommodate um, the right spacing that we need for the motor. In previous iterations, I've done kind of two. I use the stock one and then have like a 3D printed or laser cut spacer in addition to it. But this, I'm just making it all one piece. And then um, I have the mounting holes for the wire guards on the outside, which allows me to do that because it's now it's a lot thicker. And if you look closely down at the bottom, you can see that I kind of have little bosses in there and those correspond to the face of the motor. So before I'd have an issue with these kind of getting really loose and because I have the rear bearing support back here, I shouldn't have issues with that. And then because I have these bosses on there, it shouldn't clock like that. It's not gonna be rotating around. So I know it's gonna be held in place that way. The screws really can't go out because they're kind of covered and captive. And then this is back here. So I really shouldn't have any issues with this loosening. And right now, at this second, I'm not sure if this is gonna be 3D printed or if I'm gonna end up machining this out of aluminum. I kind of feel like um, the 3D print is gonna be just fine. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of forces on this because everything's gonna be so well supported. So this actually might stay 3D printed. Um, I might do you know some sort of nylon for that. Um, because it doesn't really require too much. It does have um, threaded holes here, and I can't do brass inserts. That actually needs to be threaded into the plastic, but I think that'll be just fine, so we'll see. So what's next? Well, there's still a few modifications that I need to make to the drive. Um, this is like the sixth iteration already. I keep tweaking little things here and there, but there's still more that needs to be done. So this is the battery I'm using. This is a um, 
graphene 1.0 amp hour 6s and um, this should drive it just fine it's a bit small for a feather but this is going to be a very efficient system so no big deal so that's going to fit inside there um, we've got my custom ESCs I have like 20 of these stupid things so I'm going to use a couple of these these will sit really cleanly and nicely inside there and one of the things that you might have noticed is both the um, adapter for the motor and these little bearing supports, neither of these go full height. So it actually gives me some place to route wires around. When these guards are in place, I can just kind of route things over top of them and it should be fine. So we've got an ESC that will sit right there, another ESC that sits inside here like that. Wires can go up and over. And that means in this little cavity right inside there, I need to fit the battery the switch, the radio, and all of the power distribution that goes inside there. So there's a lot to fit inside of here. So I think I'm gonna do myself a little bit of a favor. This is all just kind of um, meat. I am just keep calling things meat. But this is just solid plastic through here. So it doesn't need to be solid plastic. So we can actually take this and kind of move it in a little bit something like this. This is um, one of the iterations. I just haven't fully printed this, but this allows the switch to actually kind of set in focus. This allows the switch to actually set inside and that just little bit, I think it's six millimeters or something like that, that actually frees up quite a bit. And I'm going to do this on the other side. And on the other side, that will house eh, the radio and some other little stuff over there. And that will kind of move everything away from the battery. So once that's all done, then I got to figure out maybe some compartments. Um, what I'm thinking right now is maybe some kind of U or TPU tray that everything sits inside. Because once again, I want this thing to just kind of lift out as one piece. So that's going to be what's next. So as always, thanks for watching. I'm going to have more videos coming up on this as I continue to make some progress. Um, I might do a video on chains because I don't really see a lot of people using chains and Chains are pretty cool. Uh, they have a purpose. I think once you start hitting like the 12 pound bot class, I think you should start to look at chains. So let me know if that's something that interests you. I can do a quick little primer on chains. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos in the series. I also have the video for the original crippling depression drive pods, just in case you want to kind of see a little bit more of that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.